Hi everyone, today we are going to make experiments with human power. Our goal will be to produce as much power as possible by ourselves. We will first try our setups which transforms a regular bike into a generator, then we will give you interesting information about human power. Legs being about 5 times more powerful than arms, using a simple bicycle should be enough to get close to our maximum possible power. We made the support allowing to hold the front wheel, to raise the rear wheel, and especially to generate electricity with a brushed DC motor reversible into a DC generator. The most difficult point is to link the generator to the bike's wheel. We use a scooter wheel held to a wooden mount. The torque, that means the rotational force, is transferred with screws till the motor sprocket. By adjusting wisely the pressure between the bike and the scooter's wheels, it's possible to communicate power with a reasonable efficiency. We sit on the bike and go for a voltage measurement without any load. The size of the scooter wheel has been chosen so that a normal cycling cadence makes the generator revving around its rated value. We reach easily 36 volts, the rated voltage of the motor is then possible to reach up to 50 volts. Ok for the voltage, but power is voltage times current, and for now the current is zero as there is no load, so no useful power is produced in this test. That's also why we don't feel any resistance from the pedals. Now we're gonna try 21 watts car light bulbs, and to get straight to the point, we're gonna start directly with 9 bulbs, in a 3 series times 3 parallel layout. When the voltage will exit 36 volts, the power will be at least 189 watts. It's a success and it's not even difficult. As we reach 200 watts easily, we will try more, the maximum that we are able to do. We use for this purpose a resistor for which we calculated the value to make the most of the motor specifications. The resistor is submerged in water because it's not designed for such power. Let's go! At this precise moment, we are producing 38.3 volts and still 14.5 amps. It makes 555 watts. Not bad. With such a power, it's possible to supply a mains drill or two halogen lamps or four TVs, eight stereo, 16 laptops, 32 CFL bulbs, 64 radio sets, 128 smartphones, and near 40,000 LEDs that would be as bright as this one. To check that, we're gonna power some devices. For instance, this computer. We use a DC to DC bug converter to get the right regulated voltage. An icon indicates that the computer is charging. It only requires 30 watts, we don't even feel resistance on the pedals. To try some other devices, we made this simple inverter to convert the DC voltage from the generator to an AC mains voltage. Its maximum power is around 100 watts, so clearly less than what we are able to produce. A first test with this 50 watt light bulb. We add a 40 watt bulb, and it's always possible to exceed 230 volt, their rated voltage. We will perform other tests at full power at the end of the video. We managed to produce up to 555 watts, but can we produce more? This power corresponds to the output power of the generator, but from the pedals to the resistor, there are many losses in the bike's mechanics, between the scooter and the bike's wheels, and finally in the generator. The loss in the generator can be calculated precisely. Its efficiency is 80% in our test, it means the mechanical energy at the motor shaft is around 700 watts. It's more difficult to estimate other losses, but they are not negligible. We estimate that the mechanical power on the pedals is close to 900 watts. More recently, we managed to produce up to 750 watts with another simpler setup. It's based on an efficient 1000 watt brushless hub motor. The overall efficiency is also better thanks to a direct mechanical transmission. The power on the pedals is again around 900 watts, but we retrieve more of it. 
The energy is stored in lithium ion cells and it's possible to look for the most suitable cycling cadence by shifting the number of cells in series. Here is a simple test to estimate the maximum power we can deliver. This consists of climbing a precise height as quickly as possible. Overcoming gravity consumes energy that can be released downhill. By measuring his weight and the duration of the climb, it's possible to calculate the power. In our test, it's at least 1055 watts. Of course, it's impossible to hold this tremendous effort a long time. Our muscle stocks of ATP, which allows us to make an intense effort at any time, runs out quickly, and slower metabolisms are used over time. A healthy person can go up to 1000 watts during seconds, but for one hour, the maximum is around 250 watts. For an 8 hours walking day, it would be something like 125 watts only. It makes only 1 kilowatt hour of energy per working day. Doing this work as a job for an entire month would pay off less than 3 bucks of electricity. Even if it would be enough to supply many low consumption devices, the overall consumption of these devices can be insignificant compared to just one high consumption device. It's not intuitive, but we don't have the same sensibility with all forms of energy. For instance, 10 watts is sufficient to sound a room, 100 watts light it properly, but 1000 watts can be required to heat the room. Now question, is human energy environmentally friendly? It's possible to compare our body to an engine. For instance, we can simplify our metabolism by the combustion of sugar and the petrol engine chemistry by the combustion of the isooctane hydrocarbon. Both reactions only release water vapor and carbon dioxide, the famous CO2. If we limit our environmental study to CO2 only, responsible for global warming, the amount of work released by unit of CO2 emitted is twice as more with the engine. Clearly, in this aspect, the petrol engine is the winner, but an average car engine is 500 times more powerful than its driver continuous power capability. The best aspect of human power is not its energy or CO2 efficiency, but its sobriety. Sport is necessary for the balance of the human body, and using its own energy for a useful purpose is always a plus. Another major point is the origin of the chemical energy. Oil comes from the lithosphere, whereas the food we eat comes from the biosphere. The carbon cycle in the biosphere is quick and well balanced. The CO2 emitted by a human has been captured and will be captured by food plants. The CO2 emitted by the combustion of hydrocarbons found in the lithosphere is highly unbalanced. With current rates, only 5% of the carbon returns to the lithosphere, so 95% of current emissions will remain in the atmosphere as long as nothing is done to change that. Now, we'll try different loads by pedaling at full power. It's surprising to note that the bike generator can provide a higher power than the power supply we use for our induction heater. 